Hello my soccer universe and welcome to another Bundesliga review. Yes, we had one last week, but we had a double round and we have quite a few things coming up and quite a few things happened. And no, I'm not wearing Bayern, I'm wearing of course Union Berlin, who are back in second place and are the first chasers of the big Bavarian bad boys. The bad boys who find themselves in some... I almost want to say self-inflicted crisis. I mean, it's, it's typical crisis Bayern style, and I'm totally with our coach Oliver Glasner of Frankfurt, who ahead of the game said, well, if I have two draws and that's the crisis, I would like to have such crisis uh, anytime, because that's not really a crisis. And yeah, for Bayern, it is a crisis too. In the new year, have not won a single game. Draw, 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 draw. The one at Leipzig, okay, then they had one, we'll talk about a current where they probably should have lost even. And then against Frankfurt had a decent first half, but then again Frankfurt almost could have snatched the winner there as well. So all not, not, not looking good and then, you know, PSG, that's the one where that better goes right because everything, everything hinges on the matchup with PSG. We are, uh, it's almost certain about that. But there are more things that are brewing. You know, we had Manuel Neuer uh, having the accident, uh, the skiing accident after the World, World Cup out for the rest of the, of the season. Then he, the goalie coach, Tapalovic, uh, who came with Neuer, and is, a go is basically a good uh, a buddy of Neuer, had to be fired because he was leaking dressing room information seemingly. Uh, it's also very Bayern Munich. Uh, there's a reason why in the German speaking world they're called FC Hollywood uh, because exactly that stuff is happening all the time. Then we had uh, Coach Salihamidzic, uh, no, uh, Sport Director Sal Salihamidzic, uh, singling out Serge Gnabry for going to the Fashion Week in Paris on his day off, where um, I see the point because this is maybe not the time now in German football where, um, you know, after the World Cup and everyone's kind of looking at the spoiled players and so on, that you suddenly uh, show more of that. On the other side, it's his freaking day off. You don't call him out like acting like, like an amateur. Uh, I think there was even some uh, contract signed that he can go there. So definitely interesting times in addition we have they of course bought a uh, Jan Sommer from Gladbach uh, another very good goalkeeper who is very very similar and, and uh, I, I saw an interview with Oliver Kahn in the run-up to the uh, uh, Frankfurt game where they said well we looked at actually the profile of goalkeeper that we need and uh, the only one that was affordable was Jan Sommer because his contract is expiring but we also figured out that within Georgia Germany is probably the closest thing that we can get to Manuel Neuer so yeah and seemingly even Manuel Neuer understood that so uh, I don't know how much he wanted to patch over there but things are not right and Julian ja Nagelsmann who Remember, he's seen as an absolute genius within the German game. He has the most high-profile job. He has not really delivered. He, he delivered one championship. That's Niko Kovac style, in a way. He needs to deliver trophies. And this is just the ridiculousness of it all. On the other hand, for us neutrals or like me, not really in favor of Bayern, although I have four Bayern jerseys. For whatever, for whatever reason, yeah, they came cheap and <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, it's actually quite interesting to see the top of the league, of the top five leagues, the German Bundesliga is by far the closest one. I just made a review of uh, the Eredivisie, where I think it's even more exciting because the big boy is not up top in Ajax and there's real change coming. I don't really see that, you know, we, we have here uh, the top five are within... Uh, three points, which is really, really tight, but Union Berlin and Freiburg you just don't quite see. Maybe Dortmund, maybe Leip Leipzig, who could be, but I don't trust these teams. And that's the, the, the crux of, of, of the matter. In fact, uh, honestly, given from what they have been showing, but they're also not so calm, consistent, I, I, I actually would trust Frankfurt the most. But there's another story that we have to talk about before we uh, run through a few interesting There's of course Hertha Her 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 Berlin. I'm wearing Union Berlin, beat Ber uh, Hertha in the derby. And what I really liked was before, Hertha had a horrid start to the season. Uh, first losing uh, at Bochum, which was came as a total surprise to them uh, in, 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 in a way because that was a 
they thought they will get the points there. Then completely annihilated by Wolfsburg, who is a team that started super, super well into the season, only to be outdone by Bremen. And then losing the Derby in a way that, you know, uh, the Derby was not a great game, but just a little bit uh, was needed from Union to actually break it down. So that's that. That really is that. And then um, after the um, Wolfs Wolfs game, I mean, th the pressure was on because it was an ugly defeat, a 5-0 at home. Uh, but sporting director Freddy Bush said, no, we're going to stay with the coach. I have always been for continuity. We are not going to change anything. We're going to stay put. We make all go on going to with We believe in a sporting project. What happened after the Derby? Sporting director Bobic was gone. And now again, Hertha is going to descend into chaos. And this is the one thing that is holding Hertha back like almost no other team, uh, other big team is there are too many voices. They have an ownership situation that is very, very uh, weird. They have grand ambitions. They play in a stadium that is arguably too big for, for them. And then they have a team that they consider as the little brother from Eastern Germany, Union Berlin who is completely fan run, but is run super well. There is a concept, they have a trademark and it's all working fine for them. So uh, at the moment it's really, really, really tough to be a Hertha fan because they seem very much set to go down. They are, I have a feeling like I had with Hamburg years ago where it just points so much downward that you don't, you know, you escaped, you escaped, you, you, you escaped. It will catch you unless you have a real rethink. We thought with Freddy Bobic, who actually built up Frankfurt, among other, they will have that. No, they got rid of that. So uh, very interesting to see where this will go. So yeah, that's first thoughts uh, on uh, Germany in general, but um, let's go through the midweek round. I mean, the first result that sticks out is the 6-1 hammering of Leipzig at Schalke. Schalke is another team, fortune is going, going down, but they almost have resigned to, to, to the fact that again, want to build a healthy squad, although that never really works. 6-1 uh, under Silva, is going to uh, even Timo Werner getting on, to, on, on to the scores sheet. It was ugly as can be. Bayern against Köln. Köln score early, score early, you know, coming off a 7-1 win uh, against uh, Bremen. And the reverse fixture will be the last fixture of, of the year. So have that, have that in mind. And Köln is a team that can really press you and a high energy, really, really tough to play against. And Bayern really had trouble with that and couldn't get a foot right. And the lead for Köln was rather deserved. Second half, then it changes. Then Bayern put on pressure, but didn't really create any clear chances. And it was a brilliant moment from Kimmich from far out who takes a shot in the goal, 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 goal scene at that point where most Köln fans already thought, yeah, we actually have that one. It was not meant to be. I already said about Hertha against Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg was a, a really ugly destruction and uh, Wolfsburg just adding on to their great start. To 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 season where they were definitely they definitely have gotten a little bit of a turner around you know six against Freiburg five against Hertha you thought the sky is the limit Stuttgart very unlucky to not win that game against uh, Hoffenheim where they came back from one goal down end of getting the go ahead the goal but then while self celebrating. Ahamada is getting a second yellow, yellow card sent off and that then put um, oh, Stuttgart on the back foot and deep in stoppage time. They concede a very avoidable goal by Kramaric who already has scored the first one for Hoffenheim. Kind of Hoffenheim a little bit, teeny bit, uh, getting also back a foot in, uh, you know, and to not uh, get, get, get into the relegation trouble. Mainz had a lead. Uh, an early lead against Dortmund, however, uh, Reusen very quickly equalized and the game was going up and down and Mainz is also a very uh, nasty opponent to play against. It needed another Gio Reyna goal uh, to win it deep into stoppage time. Uh, at that moment, the one really was worrying a little bit, but Dortmund seemingly getting good results. Augsburg a surprise win over Gladbach, who also had a rather uh, horrid start to the new year. Leverkusen get the win over Bochum, and then the big one between Freiburg and Frankfurt. Um, again, Frankfurt not looking all that great, although in the first half they were the better team, and they take the lead through Kolomuani, who is 
probably the signing in Germany of the season. Ginter then quickly get an equalizer uh, at the beginning of the second half. And then the game kind of moves more into Freiburg's that, that, that direction, but uh, they hang on a 1-1 one, one draw, which just meant that, you know, um, both of them kind of keep level with Bayern. A win for Frankfurt probably would have meant a whole lot there. And then Union turned around against Bremen. A Bremen team that also was uh, that's definitely need, need of results being on a, a big losing streak. Take the lead through Pipa, Habara equalizes, then uh, 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 Geraldo Becker goes disallowed for a handball when the Behrens right after the half makes it 2-1. And that was that. Going into the weekend, we had another spirited Stuttgart performance, not rewarded, but you know, Leipzig is just bad and Leip Leipzig is a team that is kind of kicking in the next gear, it's also on a really, really good uh, run, except for the home draw against Bayern, they have won the last uh, four, they have won four, 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 five, so that's pretty impressive there. Uh, Freiburg also rather impressive now against Augsburg, which is so funny because Gary Grevich, who just came from Augsburg, scored against uh, them, then uh, the Augsburg goalie Gikiewicz was, for, of course, formerly Freiburg, so there's a lot of connection there. However, uh, when Berisha equalized for Augsburg quickly, Höhler within seconds of kick kick of restats establishes the, the, the lead then uh they probably should have put the game game away Augsburg come back into the game until Philipp Lienhardt another Austrian scores the goal and Austrians were the big story actually on the Saturday uh in, in a way which of course makes me as an Austrian, a little bit proud. We already said the derby. It was not much that uh, only needed show to beat uh, Hertha 2 0. Speaking of Austrian power, uh, probably the performance of the weekend was Karim Onisibo, uh, who is kind of an in and out player in the national team and, you know, never on the front page. He was. Involved in the first two goals uh, for Mainz, who again took a very quick, quick lead. Then with Widmer, after um, Onisivo shot, makes it 2 0. And then the third by Onisivo is a really great goal the way he chips it past the goalkeeper. And you see, at first, the ball is taking a trajectory that would have probably gone to the outline. But then it kind of curls really within. It was almost like a golf or a billiard shot. It was really, really well done. He himself then scores another one, gets a hat trick after two quick goals by Bochum, who almost got back into the game. It was 4 2 in the 72nd, but on, on, on the Sivo then makes it uh, 5 2. And, you know, three goals involved in two in, in two more definitely a performance for for the ages and also he was not not celebrating because he felt there was a little bit too much criticism on him but you know he roared back roaring back is also Hertha who desperately needed to win that they get it against Wolfsburg high flying Wolfsburg just to give it the the four for results of Wolfsburg before that beating Dortmund 2-0 then at, at Hoffenheim 2-1 this was just before the World Cup and 6-0 against, against Freiburg 5-0 against Hertha and now they lose 2-1 to Bremen and it was actually kind of deserved because Bremen uh, really played hard, got a Füllkrug penalty, which was not really a pen 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 penalty to, to be honest, Füllkrug gets the second one to put seemingly the game away, but then Paredes pulls one back and then there were some nervy moments there. The evening game between uh, Bayern and Frankfurt, again, um, as I said, Frankfurt played Bayern well, had a few chances in the first half, but I think in the first half Bayern were overall the better team, taking the lead through Leroy Sané. I mean, there were some changes. Thomas Müller came in, you know, give the Bayern team a little bit of, the, of, of a different look. However, in the second half, as soon as Kolomuani and again him equalizes, then suddenly Bayern were shaky and there were the chances there for Frankfurt to take the win at Bayern again. Uh, Bayern hung more or less onto the one. Yes, they also had chances. It was, it was a really good game, yes. Uh, Bayern had more of the game, probably created more of chance, but Frankfurt were hanging in there quite, 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 quite well, showing that they are probably not far away from Bayern in performance-wise. Squad-wise, there are not many Frankfurt players that would make it into Bayern squad. I mean, they, they were discussing whether Kohler and he would actually start for, for Bayern. I mean, we have to set the, re, uh, the relations right. But it just did not work for Bayern. And a Glasner team, I know it from Bayern because it was last coach, is usually really, really hard work for anyone. 
The Sunday games actually didn't really li live up. Köln looked a little bit tired, only nil nil against Schalke, and it was actually a little bit lucky for Köln. And Dortmund uh, had only half the expected goals for Leverkusen, but they had a goal in good form, and the score to uh, the Yemi getting finally on his Bundesliga score sheet, and then an own goal by Top 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 Sober sends the game all the way to Dor Dor Dortmund, who actually for once said, okay, we have been leaky on the, on the back, so let's keep it tight at the back. Which is rare. And with a goalie a running riot as well, it actually looked good. And Dortmund have now to start the year three wins. It never looked good, but three wins now, now that is a little bit like the start of the season. So if you look now at the uh, standings, as I said, five teams within three points. It's really, really, really tight, but you see already. Bayern is still ahead, had an enormous uh, goal differ, uh, difference, so it's another point in a way. Huge favorites, Leipzig and Dortmund only outside of chances, because Bayern is so much better. They will get it eventually right. The question is, how much will they hurt themselves by maybe, you know, exiting the Champions League, firing the coach, blah, 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 turn, 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 turn around, but uh, it seems inevitable. I also want to turn, you know, I actually think that Frankfurt is also very, very much in a battle for a Champions League spot and I wouldn't uh, count out Wolfsburg. So those seven teams up there, those will end up in Europe. I don't think that Gladbach, Leverkusen, Bremen, current Mainz will get in there. Um, I actually think that from Hoffenheim on, we are looking very much at the relegation zone, although Köln also teetering there and Bremen didn't have their best uh, ways. But Hertha and Schalke very much sad on in Bochum, uh, between Bochum, Stuttgart and potentially Augsburg, although Augsburg is getting out of there, will be for, for the relegation spot, I would say. And that's more or less what the expected standings also reflect. Now, I give you for the next two weeks all the games in Germany. Let's first look at the Bundesliga, uh, where we have a really interesting one in Wolfsburg against Bayern, given how Wolfsburg were. Also, Köln, Leipzig, that could be a very, very intense one. Uh, Dortmund against Freiburg, it was a really good game. Uh, I... I could expect something in an Union Berlin again against Mainz also. I think those are the games that I'm looking for for the next weekend. Um, and then the weekend thereafter, I may do a video before that, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, we have a really um, interesting one. You know, there's a Freiburg-Stuttgart duel in there. I think Köln against Frankfurt, but we have, of course, Leipzig against Union. That's the big one there. Bremen, Dortmund. Also, they remember that Bremen went to Dortmund and won that one. So uh, also have that in mind. Bayern should actually destroy Bochum, but you know the shoots usually don't work out. But before that, and it's already starting um, on Tuesday, we have the next cup round. Uh, is split over the two midweek rounds now. So uh, for always Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday um, Leipzig, uh, Hoffenheim. The El Plastico, if you like, but we have Union Berlin against Wolfsburg, which I think is a really interesting one. And the way Mainz have been playing, they probably can give um, Bayern a little bit of a run for the money. Uh, I have to say, I mean, Frankfurt, Darmstadt, those are too close together. And Darmstadt is a team that is leading the second Bundesliga. We might get them back. And then a Ruppert duel between Bochum and Dortmund. What we also get is next uh, weekend the return of Austrian football, which excites me, with the quarterfinal in the cup first. Uh, and I potentially can imagine doing a video afterwards, so this might be that I'm talking then about German Bundesliga as well. The big one, of course, is Salzburg against Sturm, one against two from the Bundesliga. Uh, that's a pretty big one. Also Wolfsburg against Rapid. Then the other two, yeah, <laughs> the upper Austrian teams, of course, heavily favored. It's the last game that Lask will play in Pushing for now because the stadium is almost being built. But that's towards the end of the month. I also give you the first Bundesliga round, which is on the weekend after, just in case. And we see again Sturm. They have to play not only against Salzburg, but then they open uh, the spring season, if you like, against Rapid, which is, of course, another big duel and then a duel of the Austrians. So, yeah, that's it for me from Germany. A little bit of Austria in there. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I will sure talk to you soon more. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!